In this video, we're going to talk about how to use ggplot2, Plotly, and the SF package to create interactive maps in R. In my opinion, the SF package is by far the most powerful package for plotting spatial data in R, and I highly recommend that you install it. In order to plot a map using the SF package, you need to have an SF object. An SF object is a combination of a data frame with a special geometry column that is used to plot these simple features associated with each observation. Spatial data are often stored in something called shape files. Importing a shape file is a bit tricky, so instead of trying to teach you how to do that, we're simply going to load a shape file that you will already have on your computer if you have the SF package installed. Specifically, the SF package comes with the NC shape file. The NC shape file contains information related to SIDS cases in North Carolina counties in the 70s. So if you have the SF package installed and run the following command, you will import the NC shape file onto your computer using the st underscore read function as an SF object assigned the name NC. The shape file has many different variables, but the ones I want to highlight right now are the name variable, which includes the name of each county, the BIR74 variable, which indicates the number of live births in each county in 1974, as well as a geometry column, which contains a simple feature associated with each North Carolina county. So how do we use this information to create an interactive map? ggplot2 makes it really easy to create maps of simple feature objects through the geom underscore sf function. So what we're going to do is supply the ncsf object to the ggplot function to create our ggplot. Then I'm going to add the sf geometry. I'm going to associate the BIR74 variable with the fill aesthetic of geom underscore sf. When I do this, it's going to color each county according to the values of the BIR74 variable. I'm also going to associate the label aesthetic with the name variable. This is important because each county is going to have an associated name that's going to be displayed when I make this plot interactive. Lastly, the default color scheme used for the fill aesthetic in geom underscore sf is not very nice. And in order to improve that coloring, I'm going to add the Viridis color scale, which is known to be colorblind friendly. After I create my graphic, I'm going to assign it the name ggsf, and I'm going to use the ggplotly function to make the graphic interactive. The result is shown here. You can see that when I hover over each county, I get information related to the number of births in 1974 for that county, as well as the county name. Additionally, the color of each county is chosen to correspond to the color scale shown here. So we can see that both Mecklenburg County and Cumberland County have much higher birth numbers compared to the other counties in North Carolina. While this graphic does provide a lot of useful information, you may be wondering if there's a way to include additional information associated with each county. The short answer is yes, you can, but you have to be a bit creative. Essentially, what we need to do is create a new variable, info, that is a combination of information from multiple variables. I'm going to do this using the paste zero function. The paste zero function literally takes character strings, either in specific text form or contained in a variable, and combines them one element at a time. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to combine the name, the area, the number of births in 1974, and the number of SIDS cases in 1974 into a single character string. You may notice that there is a slash in before name, area, births, SIDS, etc. The reason for that is that this slash in indicates to start a new line. You don't actually have to do this when you're creating this new variable, but by doing this, it's going to make the formatting of our display better when we hover over each county. So we combine all that information into a single variable, which we call info. And if I look at the first two elements of info, we can see information related to Ash County, information related to Allegheny County. And while the slash n shows up in the character string, it will not show up when that information is displayed in our plot. So we take that info variable and we assign it as another variable in our NC data frame. Then we use essentially the exact same commands as before, except that instead of specifying label equals name, we specify label equals info. That way, when the information is displayed, we get the information from multiple variables. 
The other thing that we need to do is we need to specify the tooltip argument of the ggplotly function. So by default, we will get information related to both the fill and the label when we make our plot interactive. By specifying tooltip equals label, we're only going to show the information related to the label aesthetic. Now, as we move our cursor over our plot, we see that we get much more information about each county. So we can see that, for example, this county is Davidson County. It has an area of 0.145. The number of births in 1974 was 5,509, while the number of SIDS cases in 1974 was eight. We still have the coloring of each county associated with the BIR74 variable, so we can, at a quick glance, see which counties have higher number of births than others. We can create a similar plot directly using the Plotly package via the Plotly function. Surprisingly, the interactive map that you create using Plotly is, is described as a scatter plot, so we have to specify type equals scatter and mode equals lines. We want to associate the info variable in the NC dataset with the split attribute. You may recall that the split attribute is used to create a separate drawing or trace for each unique value in the vector that you supply to the split attribute. So in our case, because each one of our info values is going to be unique, this is going to draw the borders for each county individually, which is very important. We could have also used the name variable, but if we did that, then when we hovered over a county, it would, it would only show the name of each county and not the additional information that we desire. We're also going to associate the BIR74 variable in NC with the color attribute. This fulfills the same role as the fill aesthetic that we saw in the previous ggplot2 graphic. Another very, very important step is to specify show legend equals false. This step may not make any sense to you, but if you do not include this information, then the graphic is not going to render at all, or at least not properly. When you specify show legend equals false, you will still get a color bar for the graphic, but you don't get other information related to the split argument, which takes a very long time to render. So once again, make sure to specify show legend equals false if you want your graphic to render correctly. Another argument that you want to specify is alpha equals one. The reason for this is that the default colors used by the Plotly package are very muted when you plot them. And by specifying alpha equals one, the colors aren't going to be as muted and it makes it easier to distinguish the colors of each county in the plot. Another subtle detail that I would encourage you to use is hover info equals text. The reason for that is that if you don't do this, you will not only get information related to the split argument when you hover over a county, but you'll get information related to the color as well, which is something you don't need. It's going to be redundant. Lastly, when I originally created this graphic, there was a bug where BIR74 actually showed up twice, once here and once just above it. In order to correct that, I have to pipe the graphic into the color bar function where I specify title equals BIR74. When I do that, that is going to correct that bug and it's only going to show BIR74 over the color bar. When I run this command, I get the, the graphic shown here. And you can see that similar to the plot created using ggplot2, we have the name, the area, the number of births, and the number of SIDS cases associated with each county. I actually prefer the format of the, the graphic generated by the Plotly package, but both approaches are great ways to create interactive maps in R.